section 1.6 in the textbook, Real World Problems with Squares and Cubes. Still working with exponents, squaring numbers, and cubing numbers. So 1.6 in the textbook on page 47 if you want to follow along. When you multiply a number by itself, you are squaring that number or raising it to the second power. We know this. For example, 3 squared equals 9 because 3 times 3 is 9. And negative 3, that base used twice, negative 3 times negative 3 also equals 9. So 3 squared is 9 and negative 3 squared is 9. You can use the square root symbol, it's called the radical sign, to indicate the positive, positive square root of a number and negate the square root of 9 or inverse or make negative the square root of 9, meaning to indicate the negative square root of 9. And that should equal negative 3 there. This should be negative 3. Um, not every number has a square root. For example, negative 9 has no square, square root because there are not two identical factors of negative 9 that will, when you multiply them together, will give you negative 9. Because negative 3 times negative 3 gives you positive 9. And of course, positive 3 times positive 3 also gives you positive 9. So the negative square root of 9, that's undefined. Please write all the examples in your spiral today. So number 1. Find the square root of 49 and the inverse of the square root of 49. Again, that radical symbol means the positive answer. So this is positive 7. And the inverse of the square root of 49 would be negative 7. Find the square root of 225. The square root of 225 is 15. And the inverse of the square root of 225, that's negative 15. Example three. Oh no, please copy the cubes into your table. When you use numbers as a factor three times, you are cubing that number or raising it to the third power. Four to the third power, four times four times four gives us 64. So four is the cubic root of 64 and 64 is the cube of 4. For example, the cubic root, and yes, in the radical symbol you need to put this little 3 there. So you kind of, the symbol has like a little open space here. So the cubic root of 64 is 4. Notice that negative 4 is not a cube root of 64 because negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 would give us negative 64. It is a cube root of negative 64. So every number, positive, negative, or zero, has only one root. One root. So when you're taking a cubic root, you're only going to get one answer. When you're taking a square root, you get a positive and a negative answer. Number th now number three. Find the cube root of 343. The solution is you're taking the cube root, or what number times itself three times will give you um, this, the cube root of seven. And um, we're going to have to use the symbol that looks like this on our calculators and put the three in first. So you would hit three and then second on your calculator, and then the symbol, which means the third root of 343, type in 343, hit enter, and you would get, yes, that it is 7, because 7 times 7 times 7 is 343. I'll show you that in class tomorrow, or if you have your calculator handy, try it yourself. But you're going to have to put the root that you want, because we can take fourth roots as well in fifth and sixth. We're just doing the third root or the cubic root. So you have to put the 3 in first. What root do you want you put in first? And you have to use the second key in order to get into the cube root symbol. So think about it. Could negative 7 be the cube root of negative 43? Well, if I did negative 7 times negative 7 times negative 7, no, I'm not going to get 343. I'm going to get negative 
343. So no, that answer is no, because it's um, negative 7 3 times odd number of negatives, I'm going to get a negative answer. Number 4, find the cube root of 1 over 216. So yes, I can take the cube root, and don't forget your little 3's here, I can take the cube root of each part. Well, 1 times 1 times 1 is the cube root of 1, and the 6 times 6 is 36 times 6 would be 216. So the cube root of 216 is 6. So the cube root of 1 over 216 is 1 6. I'd like you to try to find the cube root of 64. Try that one on your own. Either use your calculator or try to find the number times itself three times that will give you what, what is that base that you need to the third power that will give you 64. We'll go over that in class. The second part for another part of the notes is, could you solve an equation that involves a square or a cube? Well, solving equations involving squares and cubes, um, yes, we could solve these. For instance, to solve equations like x squared equals 25 or y cubed equals 125, you would need to find the value or values of the variable that make each equation a true statement. You can do that by finding the square root or the cube root of both sides of the equation. Because the opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. And the opposite of cubing something is cube rooting it. So if we have the equation x squared equals 4 and 41 hundredths, well, if you didn't have a calculator, you could do the guess and check as it suggests here method. Because I know 4, here's the 4 whole number part of this answer. 4's square root is 2, right? 4 equals 2 squared. So guess, start guessing 2 and something. So some, for instance, 2 and 1 tenth times 2 and 1 tenth. I could do a little guess and check, and I would get um, 2 and 4. And when I add that up, yep, I would get 4 and 41 hundredths. So the square root, if I was to take the square root of x squared, those would cancel each other, and then do that same thing on the other side. I could put 4 and 41 hundredths under the radical symbol in my calculator, and it would tell me that x equals positive or negative 2 and 1 tenth. Positive or negative 2 and 1 tenth. When I square them, I'm going to get negative 2 and 1 tenth times negative 2 and 1 tenth does give me 4 and 41 hundredths, and positive 2 and 1 tenth times positive 2 and 1 tenth would also give me 4 and 41 hundredths. So I have two answers here because squaring both a positive and a negative value will give me a positive number under that radical symbol there. So the answer is, and yes, you could write it like this, x equals 2 and 1 tenth or x equals negative 2 and 1 tenth, but the shortcut is to say x could equal positive on top, negative underneath, positive or negative, 2 and 1 tenth. What about this? Could you solve for x? What's the cube, the cube root of both sides, right? If you're cubing something, its opposite would be to cube root both sides. So we're doing inverse operations. You know how you have grouping symbols, exponents, and roots are opposite. Multiplying and dividing are opposites, adding and subtracting. And yes, you would solve these left to right. So in the order of operations, we can add the root here next to exponents. That's the opposite or inverse operation. So taking the cube root of something that's cubed gives you just the x. And the cube root, what number times itself equals 1,000 when you multiply it three times? Well, 10 times 10 is 100 times 10 more is 1,000. So this answer is 10. Last one. Cube rooting both sides of this. What number times itself three times equals 27? I bet you could figure this one out. See if you can figure it out. I'll pause for a moment. Okay. Hopefully you did the cube root on both sides. 
and I could do the cube root of the entire fraction, or I could just do the cube root of its parts. I could do it this way as well. And that would be 1, and I know that 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Or I could just put one symbol, and yes, I'm going to get 1 third. So, canceling, I would get x equals 1 third there. Hopefully you got that answer. The second part of the lesson, real world problems, squares, and cubes. What about some real world ones that have squaring and cubing in them? You can use equations that involve squares and cubes to solve real world problems. Sometimes only one of the square root solutions, however, makes sense. Remember, squaring, you can square both a positive or a negative number here. So this answer could be positive 5 or negative 5. Cubing, you know, cu cube rooting something, you're only going to get one answer, the positive value. Only one square root makes sense for some of these problems. Especially if it has to do with lengths of objects. You can't have a negative length. Can the length of a cube ever be negative? No, we don't have negative lengths. We don't say something's negative 16 inches long. So for example, suppose an artist makes a cube-shaped sculpture. The area of one face of the sculpture is 144 square inches. And the volume of that sculpture is 1,728 cubic inches. To find the length of an edge of the sculpture, so this edge may be here. How long is that? All the edges would be the same length because it's a cube. You can write and solve either one of these following equations. So I could take the square root of these or the cube root of these. Well, I know the square root of 144. Well, this x could either be positive or negative 12, but that negative answer does not make sense. The length of this edge cannot be negative 12 inches. So that doesn't make sense here. What could the length of the uh, edge, <coughs> oh, excuse me, be? The length could be 12 inches, not negative 12. So we would have to disregard that negative answer. And yes, because if I took the cube root here, I would still get x equals 12. Because 12 times 12 times 12 would be 1,728. So the length is 12 inches. That negative we would have to disregard. Let's try another real world problem. Teresa wants to put a piece of carpet on the floor of her living room. The floor is a square with an area of 120 182 and 2,500 square feet. How long should the piece of carpet be on each side? Okay, it's a word problem, so they wrote a let statement here. Let the length of each side of the carpet be x. So let the length be x. Okay, well I know that the area of a square is side squared equals that area. Well, they're calling x the side. So my x squared would equal 100 the area. I'm going to plug in what I know from my word problem. So I know my side length is x and my total area is 182 and 25 hundredths. If I take the square root of both sides, the inverse operation, I'm going to get that x could be positive or negative 13 and 5 tenths. Well, I'm going to disregard that negative 13 and 5 tenths. Why does that negative square root not make sense? Because you can't have a negative side of a floor or a carpet, right? So the length, I'm going to label this, sentence answer box label, the length of each side is 13 and a half 
eight. Whoops, there's one my back ones. So the length of each side is 13 and a half feet. We're gonna disregard that negative. Can't have negative sides. Lengths are always positive. Try one on your own. Uh, yeah, let's try this example on your own. Write a left statement, follow the exactly what I did in the last one, take the square root of both sides, and sable. And we'll go over that first thing in class tomorrow.